Is coming up. Well, it appears to be a case of out of sight, out of mind for this bankrupt businessman. David McAuliffe has left a hundred million dollar toxic waste dump in the Burbs while he lives the high life on a luxury yacht. Families next to the tip say it's a disaster waiting to happen. I think you either love me or you hate me. Residents are wondering why you've left them with a $100 million cleanup bill. So perhaps you could help us clean it up. Absolute load of rubbish, as you can see. They're fed up with the rubbish and demanding answers. These materials are being broken up, disposed of, who knows how. As you can see, there are houses just across the way. So I feel really concerned for those people and their children. How the hell has this been allowed to happen basically in a residential property area? The dust just lands all over the house. And we're not going to stand for it. It's no wonder these families are angry. They've been left with this stinking pile of trash at the end of their street. This actually could be a catastrophe if it caught fire. If that goes up... We're, we're good night nurse. It's my history. While the man behind this toxic tip plans to sail into the sunset. Makes me angry, you know, that he he's down there enjoying himself like that and we're, we're stuck with this. It, this a, is ridiculous. There's a bit of material there, yeah. A bit? It's an eyesore. Well, it's... It's a know. mountain. It's a mess that's hard to miss, right in the middle of residential homes and around the corner from a school in Victoria's Lara is a tip the size of a sporting field. Well look, it speaks for itself, look at it, it shouldn't be there. Local families are fearful it could go up in flames. This is just a potential for another big disaster and everyone will say, oh, well, perhaps we should have done something later. And hazardous materials expert Trevor Thornton says it's a catastrophe in the making. We just don't know what's buried in there and the sort of sources where it comes from, there could be asbestos, there could be chemical containers, there could be anything in there. That's quite concerning. Absolutely. Things could end like the recent factory fire we saw in Melbourne's west, which caused toxic black smoke to billow across the suburbs. And could have uh, long-lasting, short-term and so forth health impacts to, uh, to the community. For years, this so-called recycling site took in fees from industrial businesses who dumped their trash. Just would have made an absolute fortune off it. Truck driver Glenn used to deliver here. I've heard stories of different asbestos, all kinds of stuff being dumped in here. Illegally. The man behind this mountain is David McAuliffe, who's been in and out of court over C&D recycling. Now, after years of operating in this heap growing, this boss has been bankrupted by the tax office. This is just ridiculous. If any of us left rubbish on our front lawn and that there or one there, we'd have to go up the tip and pay exorbitant fees and the council would say, oh, and it, you know, it's our responsibility to enforce that. But where have they been? But McAuliffe has walked away without cleaning up his mess and it's likely the taxpayer will be footing the bill, an estimated $100 million. Why is it going to be ultimately the people here in Lara and Corio that are all going to have to pay it? Dirty David hasn't escaped just yet. We tracked him down and brought him some of the rubbish he's left behind. It's not toxic, it's demolition material. Do you want to take it? I don't know what you've got in it. There you go. It's fine. <laughs> you can have the gloves too. No, thanks. Um, you don't like getting your hands dirty, I suppose. Well, it's a motive. Um, McAuliffe claims he's done nothing wrong. It is not a toxic situation. It's not full of asbestos. Um, WorkSafe and us run a whole series of tests. There's not asbestos. Well, unless you are checking every single truck that comes in, we did. how are you to know that? Well, there's been a bunch of fires there's of late, of and, fires. and residents yeah. are concerned yeah. that it and might go up in flames and the health hazards that come with but that. It's not plastic, it's not Coolaroo, it's not that sort of material. But according to WorkSafe, testing conducted earlier this year confirmed a small amount of material containing asbestos was present at the site. So who does David blame? The council. And it's been an adversarial process. In fact, the relationship's quite toxic. When you talk about toxic... What we need to look 
forward to is the future. What are we going to do with this thing? Everyone's been trying to say, OK, let's work to an outcome. But council doesn't want to play. Council doesn't want to talk. If you want to clap your hands, you need two hands. And without the other hand, it's not going to happen. The person is as low as they go. A snake is low and he's lower than a snake. Brendan Booth, who owns a demolition business, took McAuliffe's former company, Barwon Wreckers, to court. The deal was, at the end of it, to split up what was left over. But at the end of the job, there was no money left. He was awarded $200,000, but claims he hasn't received it. At the end of the day, I had to fork out of my own pocket to pay for all the hygienists, all the air monitoring on the job and tip fees. So, you know, not only being out of pocket for the job, but also out of my own pocket. David McAuliffe claims to be broke, so you'd presume he'd be living in a modest apartment somewhere. But no, he's staying on this incredible 28-metre yacht, which is owned by a trust controlled by a family member. Why bankruptcy? Why this time? Mm. You used the figure of 100 million. Mm -hmm. um, if... And by the way, if it is 100 million, you know who benefits from that 100 million? The council. <laughs> Cause, cause, cause I don't think anyone benefits. The council does, absolutely. But anyway, me or the family haven't benefited one cent from the entire operation. I just don't understand why the residents in this area and our health isn't being prioritised um, over a quick buck. You're going to head off to the yacht now? Um, no, I'm not actually, but anyway, okay. it's not my yacht. Good night. Okay. Mm. Like this, no? Okay. Oh, yeah, it's all yours. The real issue is when does the material start moving? Because it's a, it's, it's a danger. What an eyesore. Geelong Council is taking McAuliffe to court again over those breaches in November. You can read that statement and one from WorkSafe and the EPA on our website.